Today, I'm going to show you two ways to implement the password base off with Superbase. The second way is my implementation for my production app. So, but first, let's take a look at the first implementation. So the first implementation is that, so for the password base us, we're going to handle like sign up with email and password, log in and reset and things like that. And the way to do this one with Superbase is really easy. You can just call to this function and it will do the, the job done and it will send an email to the user to confirm. But one limitation is that if you do not use anything else outside Superbase, Superbase has a default SMTP, which is not really good for your production or even development because uh, they allow you to two to four, maybe two per uh, per hour slash uh, projects. So which means within an hour, you can send two to four requests only. This is like for, for project. And that it's not good for testing. It's not even good for testing. So if you want to implement this, you need to move to the custom SM. TP, which is easy to use, which is the one is resend because resend also has integrated with uh, Superbase, so it's going to make things a lot easier to integrate. So I can show you the demo on that. So we can go into the resend on this case. Let's go to resend and the resend. If you go to the dashboard, you will see uh, uh, the integration tab right here that allow you to integrate with Superbase, you can just click, 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 and then set up a project and it's already good to go. And as you can see, this is click, 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 and then go to Superbase dashboard and everything is set up for you. As you can see, enable custom SMTP, all of this value, all of this field is filled automatically for you by a recent. And this thing is maybe as a bug, I'm not sure, but it still work even though like we have this one right here. And so that's how you would integrate with resend. And then you can adjust the rate limit and you want as well. Before you can do rate limit on 25, right? At, on two to four, but right now you can do this. I think I accidentally disabled all of these things. Maybe I need to enable this one again. And if we go back, we should see that we can be able to adjust right here. You can add this one to a million, uh, whatever you want, okay? So this is the way to change the limit on that. So that makes things a lot easier. And, but the problem, I found one small problem with this one is that uh, about user spamming. So for example, right now we set the limit like 25. So let's say if the user spam to sign up, spam, they spam call this function. Maybe I can copy this function right here. Let's say if they spam call this function to your application, so your application will call to resend and resend will call to the Gmail, uh, call to send, send this to Gmail, okay, uh, to your email. And then, so we have some limitation right here. So you have to adjust the number of this one right here. So it can be, if it's 25, it means that let's say one, if one person requests 25 time within per hour, it means the other people cannot send it again because this is the limitation and you can increase this one so let's say you increase this a lot so just imagine again what if people spam to these things and the problem right now is becoming that your application right now uh the resend will send all of this and then you will charge by that because resend is not free and you can check on recent pricings it's uh let's say it gives you free on initially which is like 30,000 email a month, 100 email per day. But, and then if you go to pro plan, this is the, there's no limit for daily and then only 50 K per month. But if you exceed that, it's probably like you pay something like that. So this is something that you should aware in the beginning of your application. You don't want it to everyone to spam. And then if later you grow and a lot of user, you can consider upgrade to the pro version, but be aware of that this could happen as well. So. So that's why I come up with a solution that I, for my case, I don't really want to go with this way and with this way, because I am not in total control of how many user can send to the resend right here. So there's a way to avoid this one, but let me show you the first solution. So let's say if you care, like, okay, we don't want to want the user to spam, but we want to use the, uh, integration between recent and Superbase to send to email to the user. What we can do is we move this one to the API level instead. So we can create an API slash, let's say sign up, uh, sign up like this. So the email, 
uh, this sign up. So you move all of this code right here to the API instead. And then the reason that we do with an API level is because right now we could do rate limit on this one, like rate limit on the number of user can call to our API. And then you can custom, for example, three per day, for example, three requests a day. And so, this, so it means the user can, uh, one user, one IP address, because we rate limit this one on IP. So one IP address can request to your application only three, uh, three times per day. And that's it. And so this is make thing a lot easier. So it means that one user can send to use your server right here only three times per day. So the the request to resend and resend send this one is going to be low. And that is one solution that you can uh, think of. Be uh, and but this uh, not but this approach is also can bypass as well if you think this is safe. This uh that the user can bypass this approach as well. I think one of the flaw on this approach is all of the thing that I mentioned is that if you care about the user spam to your SMTP, is that the user can grab all your key, which is this key right here. If you, uh, this one, all of this key is next public. What next public mean that this is going to be public in the client side of your application. So if this is going to be public uh, and I mean, people can inspect view source and then find out this key, which mean they can grab this key and then they can, uh, for example, they can run this one on their local, run on their local computer. And then they can bypass your API right here, right? And then they can just call this code directly. But if they call to this code, when they call to this code, it's just a call to your Superbase project and create a user there. But the problem is that they will spam call to your recent uh, SMTP, right? If they spam this one, they will spam to your SMTP and they will bypass this rate limited that you set right here. So this is not a good way if you are trying to limit on the user on to use your custom SMTP of integration with Superbase and recent. Don't get me wrong, like the, the approach right here is actually really um, easy and simple to use and you don't really have to care too much. But if you like me, I would care too much like the user, the, the possibility of the user that's going to exploit your application and do something that I mentioned about. Uh, I, I go with another approach instead. So here's my approach and also what do you think about it as well? So first, I think I do not disable this one. So I think this is wrong. So I remove this one. Uh, so first, we going to use the Superbase key. We use the Superbase admin key and we use the Superbase admin key to do create, uh, to sign up. So instead of calling this one, which we allow user to do that. Okay. We allow user to do that, but we are not going to call this one, but we use the Superbase admin key to do this operation instead. So if you look at my API right here, I use the Superbase admin to generate a link, the type is sign up. So I think the type right here, you can do a lot of types and you can see we have invite magic link or password recovery. You can do that with the admin. So after you do this, it will send, it will have a link. And when you get a link that from the response from here, you can uh, use that link, use that link and then call, uh, and then call resends right here call resend right here. So which means that everything is in control. You use the, you call resend by your own. At first approach, you can just call to this function and this function call to Superbase and Superbase will do the uh, integration with resend. So it's automatically for you. But in our case, we do that by ourselves. So the send right here, we do out by ourselves. And on top of that, since this is our own API, we can do the rate limit on top right here. We can do whatever we want. Let's say three per day, three requests per day. And so this is, even though the user have access all of this one, they can call to this one. They can call to this one, but the rate limit on this one is going to be uh, default to this one. So I'm going, if I go to with that approach that I mentioned, so first, for the email provider right here, the custom right here, I would disable this. Okay. I would disable this. And as you can see right now, this one is also disabled and there's all the, the user can abuse this one. There's only two only 
they can they can call from this one even they call this one from their local machine they can call to this function but they can call two times only and it, then the rest it will not block per, within per hour so the user cannot do that so the only way that the user right now can call to my project to sign up the user and things like that is to go through this route right here and this route right here they cannot abuse because i do the rate limit on this one which is i do like three times per day and things like that and so that would i implement uh, this approach i switch it to this one instead and also one of the thing about this implementation i find one flaw of this one is that when i create an account so let's say i call the when i call this one with this email so this is like example password and then inside when we call this one inside superbase it will insert to one table called auth.user okay and this one it will have the record of this one so let's say i'm going to move it right here so we will have an email and a password but the verify status of this one is going to be false this is like the record on the initial call and let's say when when you call this one you will send an email to the user right and let's say if the user haven't confirmed the email but and from your application you call it again you call this one again and then this time you change the email you think that the first email is bad it's too simple i don't want to confirm that right now i just call it again and let's do this email for password for example and it will this one it will send to your gmail and when you confirm that it actually update this one to false so this one it will up, uh, not for update this one to true so which mean that your password is the same from the last uh, from the first request it's not updating on from based on the last request you can check this one on your own uh that i tested today and it, it and it worked like that so it's a bit annoying that i just know that this way because i thought that if i haven't confirmed the email and i send a request again this should take this this should uh, the email here should uh, the password here should be the one to use right but actually like the first request is the one that is being used and the way to bypass this uh, this one i found a thread on reddit that some people have the same problem as well and so he creating like the workaround which is like the update and verify account right here i leave the link so you can go ahead and read this one and i haven't tested by myself yet and so I do not know, but I think I think it's work. I think it's work, and I put the link. And so that's one way is like it's really headaches to do. So I think for me the way to bypass this one, I think I would say right now is just to based on the implementation on this one. I would do I check if the user is already exists or not. So basically, if like even if verify or not. So verify fail or not so it doesn't it doesn't matter i just to check if the email is already exists maybe user email already exists if it already exists i want them to i prompt them let's say hey your email is already exists maybe you can take a look at your gmail to confirm it and if it's uh you know a pass is it like bypass and think it's like invalid anymore maybe you can reset because your account is already exists so they can reset their password instead so when they reset a password, we will send them an email so they can confirm on that and then it, the process is the same. So this is what I would do to bypass the problem that I have here. I would try that. I haven't tried it yet. So or maybe I can opt in to use one of the functions that mentioned in this thread right here. I will I would try to test that out as well. So yeah, that's uh, what I'm going to do. Because currently I'm working on one of the projects which is called Nextbase it is to speed up your Superbase app. So um, I wanted to create like a boilerplate for some of you who want to use Superbase be, uh, with your project and you don't will really have to care and go through all of this scenario. And like I mentioned before, because all of this one, I face it and I don't want to go this, I implement, I go through this approach. And so that's why I create this project. So you can just clone it and use it for production ready. So this is what I want and for myself and if you find useful it's going to be for you guys as well currently it just i just finished the login and the uh sign up i test this one i don't like it that's why right now i move to this new approach right here which i haven't finished it yet 
I will let you know when I finish this project right here. So yeah, that's all I wanted to share with you guys. And that's uh, maybe this video is kind of a bit too long. Uh, and But hopefully you learned something. Hopefully it's useful. That's what I'm trying to do is try to be useful. And uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.